Hello YouTube, I'm Natanis Likens, and today is March 13th, it is Wednesday, and we're on the opposite end of my day, uh, so I woke up, uh, got ready, went to work, I'm at work, now it's just a matter of, you know, uh, in a few minutes I'll have to go inside and, like, you know, do work, so... I was thinking about something that, you know, I wanted to dive into a little bit, and this has to deal with uh, Pokemon again, and that is the battle mechanics. So, since Gen 6, every major title, or every main game, main series game, has had a different battle mechanic introduced. In Gen 6, we got Mega Evolutions. In Gen 7, we got Z Crystals. In Gen 8, we got Gigantamax. And as we all know, in Gen 9, we have Terrestrialize or Terrestrialism, whatever it is. Um, and the reason I want to talk about this is because with Pokemon Legends ZA coming up, they have announced they are returning to Mega Evolution. And uh, I do think that that is the fan favorite. Uh, I don't have specific numbers on that or specific knowledge. I just get the feeling from the community and various sites that I visit and everything that everybody prefers Mega Evolution over any of the other mechanics. And I figured I would like talk about some of those and give my thoughts on them and actually kind of rank them a little bit. Um, so we're going to skip over Mega Evolutions for now because Mega Evolution is my favorite and I definitely think it is the best battle mechanic out of the four that we have had in the past. Uh, so let's just go in order of them as they were released. So the next one up would be the Z Crystal mechanic. Okay, so Z Crystals were an interesting like one-time use item. And it was one time per battle, regardless. Excuse me, I had something on my tongue. Uh, and the way they worked is you gave your Pokemon the Z Crystal, and depending on what type it was, like dragon, water, fire, whatever, uh, it would make one of its moves a more powerful version of that type. And it was extremely generic. Um, it, honestly, it was so generic that watching the battle animations for it over and over again really got annoying very quickly. Um, and it was a one-time use thing. So it, it didn't matter if you popped it the very first time in the battle or the very last time, which, you know, if it's the last time, then it's already the last time, uh, you couldn't ever use it again within that same battle. So it was, it was kind of a one-time flashy move that was, was pretty underwhelming in my opinion. Um, I remember I used it a few times within Sun and Moon just simply because I liked the animation for specific ones, and that was about it. Uh, there were some interesting ones like the the, the one specific to Eevee where it boosts all of Eevee stats, and this is Eevee specifically. If you're using just a plain Eevee, why? Um, so there, there was a lot of oddities in it too. And the fact that it was just very generic and turned any of the same type attacks into one special attack, in most cases, there were a few exceptions, um, it was pretty underwhelming, and not to mention it also took up your item slot on your Pokemon. So, you either went with powering up its ability, or powering up... You went with powering up its ability permanently by having an item. Let's say we got a Pikachu with a, with a battery, I think it is, that increases its electrical attacks, to having... An electrical, uh, the electric Z crystal, which means that you can have a extremely powerful electrical attack once 
her battle. Yeah, so it, it really wasn't that great. Um, I do think collecting the crystals was fun. Uh, some of them did have specific niche uses. But overall, eh, it was kind of... It, it kind of wasn't that great. It, 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 it was usable. It was fun to collect them, and that was about it. Um, next up, let's go to... Uh, Gen 8 with Gigantamax. This is Sword and Shield. Um, Gigantamax. Okay, so Gigantamax, much like the Z-Crystals, once again, any Pokemon could use it. And there were specific Pokemon that got special Gigantamaxes. However, there is a caveat to that, in that you had to max out the Pokemon's Gigantamax stat. And they don't tell you this. Um, unlike the Z-Crystals, all you have to do is have the right Z-Crystal, give it to the right Pokemon, and there you go. You've got whatever special move. Uh, with, the with the Gigantamax, they didn't tell you that you had to max out a specific stat on your Pokemon. And this is like the Gigantamax stat. Um, you kind of either had to look it up online or just stumble across it. Uh, but it it was very interesting in the fact that they gave specific Pokemon unique Gigantamax forms. But I really have to question why. Like, why give any specific ones a unique Gigantamax? Like, the, the starters, their final stages all had... A unique visual to them and then several others throughout the games uh, off the top of my head I can't really think of all of them I do know that Eevee had a unique one Pikachu had a unique one uh, Meowth had a unique one I believe Gengar had a unique one and a few others um, like Hat Train and Orbeetle Orbeetles was my absolute favorite I love that um, but the Gigantamax itself was kind of the same as the Z-Crystals. Only instead of a specific type attack, it changed all of the attacks into a generic, all-encompassing one. Like, if, if you had three completely different normal attacks or abilities on your Pokemon, then they all became the same thing. And then if you had whatever elemental attack, they all became the same thing. So you could have three different grass moves, they would all become the same one. You had three different uh, water moves, they all became the same one. Now there were a few niche ones like uh, terrain. Terrain moves actually changed the terrain and then there were... It was just this whole messy, like all-encompassing thing. Like it, it became very generic very quickly and the animations for these were actually more annoying than the Z-Crystal ones. So I, I really have to rate the Z-Crystal ones higher than the Gigantamax simply because the animations for Gigantamax were flipping annoying. And, and it wasn't just the attacks. It was the actual act of Gigantamaxing. Like there's a whole animation sequence for that. And it just got really, really tiresome watching those sequences over and over and over and some of them were quite long like um like the uh the fighting type attack it's like knuckles something like knuckle buster or something um watching that one just just put me to sleep like so many times seeing that i will say that as far as actual worth in the battle mechanic um it was actually worse than the z crystals I rarely ever felt like I needed to use the Gigantamax. Now, in some cases, yes, you do need to use them. But if it wasn't a make-or-break situation. Z-Crystals, same deal, wasn't a make-or-break. But the, G the, Gig the Gigantamax was such a huge staple of those games that they made it feel like you absolutely had to use this. Like, this is extremely important. And in some cases, I I did absolutely love them. Like, Orbeetle's Gigantamax, a giant UFO, is 
flipping amazing. Like, I love that little guy simply because of its Gigantamax. No other reason would never use it outside of that, but its Gigantamax is just amazing. Um, yet again, another example of ones that have unique Gigantamaxes. Orbeetle is my favorite Gigantamax out there. Uh, it is hilarious to see that giant mothership. Um, but yeah, I have to actually rate the the Gigantamax below the Z Crystal because it was so annoying watching those animations over and over and over and over. At least with the Z Crystal, they were a little bit shorter. Okay, next up, Terrestrialize. Scarlet and Violet. Is there anything good about these games? Okay, Terrestrialize is probably the dumbest mechanic they have introduced. Okay, so if you're not familiar with it, and if more than likely if you're watching this video, you already you're familiar with it already because you're a Pokemon fan. But to, if just on the off chance that you're not familiar, Terrasilize just makes it to where you can change your Pokemon's typing. Yeah, you could change a Pikachu to a Water type. You could change a Charmander to a Water type. You could change a Bulbasaur to a Water type. You could change a Squirtle to a Dragon. At least that's what it seems like on the surface. Um, that's not actually the case, technically. I mean, it is the case, but it isn't. Um, they don't tell you this in the game. Uh, you kind of have to figure it out on your own. And that is, you have to change the Pokemon type. They don't automatically come with that unless you find either a random alpha. I'm just going to call it an alpha. I don't know what it's really called. Or you get one in a raid. Um, the I don't like the raids. I haven't liked them since they introduced them. And I don't think bringing the raids back even made any sense. Um, I don't like the raids at all. They're, they're dumb. Uh, anyway, the terrestrialize, in order to actually change a Pokemon's typing for its terrestrialize, if I'm even saying that right, I'm going to be saying it so many times here in the next few minutes that it may not even be the right word at the end of this. Um, but in order to change it, you actually had to get 50 of the type that you want. So if I want to change Pikachu to dragon type, I have to get 50 Draga, dragon uh, Terra shards. 50 of them, okay? That's, that's not that bad. It's not that bad. Don't get me wrong on that. Um, I know a lot of things with collecting and everything. Most people are like, oh, that's not very much. Why are you complaining? I'm, I'm not complaining about that. The, it's just the fact that they don't tell you this. That's the problem. There's no information on that. They don't tell you that anywhere. You just kind of have to stumble into it. Okay, so once you have 50 of these, you go to a very sp specific... Um, restaurant in the game which is also i believe that's the normal type gym but you give them 50 of them they make a stew yes they make a stew they make food out of these shards and then you give that to your pokemon and it changes its terrestrialized type not as type in general but when it terrestrializes it changes its type to whatever that is okay so first off, that is very convoluted and not too straightforward. At least the other three are straightforward. Mega Evolution, you give them a Mega Stone. Uh, Z Crystals, you give them a Z Crystal. Gigantamax, you don't have to do anything. You just Gigantamax it. Terrestrialize, you have to gather 50 of an item, go to a random restaurant, have them make that specific type uh stew or food item i'm saying stew i know it's not stew um and then feed it to your pokemon in order to change them otherwise they are stuck as whatever their primary type is okay do you see the issue here that is just that's way too much for a mechanic that you don't even need to use not to mention it's a mechanic that at the end of the day really I have to ask why. I don't understand it. 
I get changing your Pokemon's type to a different type so that it's not weak against whatever you're fighting, but if you're weak against whatever you're fighting, you probably don't have coverage moves for that. Point in case, we keep using Pikachu, um, and I originally did not want to use Pikachu because I wanted to use something a little more interesting, um, but if we are using Pikachu and we are fighting a rock type, well, the other options as far as which types we could possibly switch it to to have an advantage over rock is really grass and water. Okay, are, are you starting to see the problem here? Pikachu is an electric type and it learns normal moves and electric moves and maybe a few iron moves or steel moves. It doesn't really learn anything like water or grass. So even though you have a type advantage, you don't have a move advantage. So you've got this grass Pikachu up against an Onix. What are you going to do? You're still using normal moves and electric moves against a rock that is immune to electric and normal moves are uh, half they're not that effective against it. We'll say it like that. So there, there's literally no reason to use this mechanic because it gives you no actual tactical advantage. Yes, it does mean that you can survive being hit by your weakness if you terrestrialize. But at the end of the day, you don't have coverage moves to deal with what you're weak to. You might as well switch to another Pokemon. So why... I, I, I fail to understand why they even made this battle mechanic. It doesn't make a lick of sense compared to all the others. I, I have to just... I just have to tell you right now, this is the one battle mechanic that I didn't bother using at all in the main game. The only reason I used it ever is because they stupidly made it one of the one of the quests to get points once you get to the Indigo Disc in order to unlock all the things with the blueberry points. Um, mostly getting the starters. I don't care about any of the others except maybe working on getting the printer. But um, it, I literally went through the entire game, the whole main story, then the post game, and then the till mask without ever using this mechanic because it doesn't make any sense. It's not even that good. And like I've been saying, if you change over to a different Pokemon to avoid your type weakness, now you're still at a disadvantage because you don't have a move advantage over them. Instead, all you've done is weakened their attacks on you. But you haven't strengthened your attacks on them. Yeah, do, do you see what I'm getting at here? Um, this is by far the worst mechanic they have ever produced. I don't understand why they did that. But they did. Now, we are getting Mega Evolution back. And as I stated at the beginning of this, Mega Evolution is my favorite of the battle mechanics. And in fact, I think even Game Freak themselves or the Pokemon Company love Mega Evolution because it has been in every, not every, it's been in most of the bigger side games. So Pokemon Go has Mega Evolution. You don't see the Z Crystals. You don't see Gigantamax, I don't think. I don't know. It's been a while since I even looked at my Pokemon Go. And I definitely don't think the Terrestrialize is in there. But I do know the Mega Evolution is because I have a Charizard. Of course I've got a Charizard. Um, <laughs> and then I saw a comment on a Reddit post where Mega Evolution is also in Pokemon Unite. Um, I don't know that much about Pokemon Unite, so I don't know if it's got the other three mechanics in there, but my point is, uh, Mega Evolution seems to be the fan favorite and even the company favorite of all the battle mechanics, so I'm happy to see that coming back, and I get a sneaking suspicion, um, based on 
some of my own interpretations of what's going on with uh, the release of Legends ZA that Mega Evolution may be coming back to stay. It may end up being a main game mechanic for the rest of the Pokemon uh, future. Uh, don't hold me to that. I just, I've got this sneaky suspicion about what's going on with that. And, uh, you know, we're here to talk about battle mechanics, so I'm not going to get into the other thing that I wanted to talk about with Legend ZA, especially considering uh, I've only got a few more minutes before I have to go inside. And this video is already like 20 minutes long from talking about everything. And yes, my beard is absolutely a mess. Um, so, yeah. That's kind of my thoughts on the uh, the various battle mechanics we've had over the years. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, please leave me a comment. Let me know what your favorite battle mechanic was and uh, what you think of the others. How do you rate all four of these battle mechanics that we have had? Um, and if you really enjoyed this, please leave a like. And if you want to stick around and see where my channel goes and how it grows, uh, think about subscribing. And I will see you all later. Bye.